I buy this car from you today? I can see that being a very reasonable number. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back, my favorite day of the week. It's car video day, and we're excited to introduce what we have here. My name is Gaston Rosato. And I'm Renzo Rosato, and bear with me as I introduce this amazing car we have for this week. It's the Alfa Romero Giulia Sprint Gran Turismo Veloce. What a sentence and what a car. It's this car right behind me, the 1967. And let's, let's kind of brief this up, GTV. It moves on, it evolves, it becomes a lot of different things that we're gonna talk about. But my main question here is, is this a $100,000 car? Let's find out. Let's take a look. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing gloves to drive a car. Well, first and foremost, it's cool. And second of all, that's why cars have glove boxes, you get it? You put your gloves in there. It's what you're supposed to do, especially with a wood steering wheel. It prevents you from slipping. Makes it a little more pleasant drive. So what draws me so much to this car is the designer, Mr. Giorgetto Giagiario. They say about 20 years old when he designed this car. It was one of his first designs while working for Bertone, the coach builder. I think it's one of the most beautiful cars ever designed. And the fact that it came from a kid is even more spectacular. Now we see in the market recently, these cars climb and get appreciated more than ever before. It seems like auction after auction, we're getting higher and higher prices for some desirable cars, which leads me to believe that this will soon be, in the very near future, a $100,000 car, no doubt. Not only do they look good, and they have the pedigree of Alfa Romeo, but they drive spectacular. Like I said, it is a true sports car. The braking power, the acceleration, the handling, putting the whole thing into perspective, right? We're talking about 1967. This is not your modern day sports car. Keeping that mentality, you can truly appreciate and drive this car for what it's worth and have a great time doing it. And they're very comfortable too. The fact is that it's a very spacious cockpit or the cabin. Typically sports cars, you have to sacrifice that comfort level, but this one has it all. This one has it all. All right, Gaston, so tell me what makes this a GT Veloce? Good question, Renzo. You always have good questions. <laughs> you could have purchased a GT, a regular spec GT Veloce. That means you bought the Veloce spec, the fast model. Let's start off in the front since we're here, okay? And very quick thing to mention, this is what they call the Scalino body. It is called that because Scalino in Italian means step. They call it the step nose because it has this cutout right here. It looks like the hood is open, but in fact it's not. Very important distinctive features on the, that you'll only find on the Veloce. You can spot it out like that. One. It has the black mesh grill with the three horizontal lines coming across the whole front end. Two, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars versus six, which is not easy. You gotta sit there and kind of count them. But that's actually a feature, okay? And then the bumpers, these are stainless two-piece bumpers versus the regular GT, which we'll look at in a minute, which is a solid chrome. Let's take a look at the GT and let's notice what I just mentioned. Again, a Scalino body car, early car, However, it's a uniform grille. We have six bars coming across the heart, and then we have a solid one-piece bumper. So this card was marked with the four-leaf clover on the C-pillar, found only on the Veloce model. The bucket seats are sportier in the Veloce than what you would find in the regular GT model. The dash has the wood trim dash, only found on the Veloce model. So obviously we see there's just cosmetic differences between the GT and the GTV but I'm sure that there's differences with the engine. The GTV and the GT both share actually the same exact motor. It was a 1600 four-cylinder dual overhead cam motor 
However, the DTV had a little more horsepower, a little more torque, and they did that by making some changes with the cams and valve. It was only about 10 more horsepower. Right. But 10 horsepower on a lightweight car, you can actually make feel a difference. These cars were the epitome of sports cars, okay? We're talking about, like I said, dual overhead cams, four-wheel power disc brakes, five-speed gearboxes, and 40 dual Weber side draft carbs. However, this model ultimately evolves and turns into more things. And let's take a look at that over here on this side with the GTV. Later model cars were only called GTVs. They were, you didn't have the option of a GT or a GTV. It was only GTV. So later models will be what? What year is this? This car right here, for instance, is a 1974. And as you can see, the biggest difference would be no more Scalino or step front. And now we have four headlights versus two. But the shape of the car is essentially the same. Tail lights change. Now we're upgraded to a two liter. And this car is fuel injected, which they called Spica, which was a me mechanical fuel injected system. Okay, there was a variance in, the, in, the, in between, which was the GTV 1750. We don't have that car here, but the car ultimately evolved from, from the GT to this. And then you had other variances in between that, like the GTC, which was the convertible. Then you have the Juniors, which offered smaller models for Europe and things like that. I say now we do what is the funnest part of this video. Let's go drive and discuss a little bit more about why this car could be worth back guys it's always a good day when you have the opportunity to drive these cars it's a car that checks off all the boxes on a collectible level it has the styling Italian pedigree hard to come by supply and demand boom hundred thousand dollar cars before you know it I'm saying it right now I think you're totally right I think it's gonna be a car that's gonna be worth a hundred thousand dollars within the next couple of years I mean that car is super fun to drive it makes you want, want you know weaving in and out of traffic and down it's a sports car it's, it's the epitome of a sports I car I imagine that thing back in the 1967 it must have been Top of the line. Oh, it Amazing. really was, it really was. Guys, please, there's a lot of back-end stories happening, so you have to follow me at The Barn Miami and at Gaston Rosado, okay? You'll see that the way I buy and I trade these cars on a daily basis, don't miss out. Follow me at Renzo Rosado. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video, and we'll be back here next week. Peace.